Right, so last time we were try, uh, trying to prove a theorem that a subset S of real line is connected if and only if it is an interval. So we had already proved one way. So namely if S is connected then S is an interval. So let us prove uh, the converse part of it. So conversely, so let S be an interval. And suppose S is not connected. So that implies if S is not connected, it must be <coughs> having a separation. So let us say S is equal to A union B, a separation of, of S. That means S is written as a union of two sets where A and B both are separated. So let us choose an element A belonging to A and an element B belonging to B. So here is A and here is B. Right? Because this is a separation, so S is equal to A union B. When A and B are of course non-empty sets, and A is separated from B and B is separated from A. So let us choose any element A in A and B in B and look at the element which is the midpoint of the two. Right? So then the midpoint should belong to, it is between A and B. So, uh, so let us write that is a point, we know that this is in between A less than less than B implies we have got S is an interval. So anything in between must be a part of an element in the interval. So implies A plus B by 2 belong to S. Now if it belongs to S, S is A union B. So it, it will either belong to A or to B. So two possibilities. So either A plus B by 2 belongs to A or A plus B by 2 belongs to B. So if this is the case, if this is the case, so then consider A1. Let us call this point as A1, A plus B by 2 and B1 equal to B. So if it belongs to A, then I call it as A1 and the right point B, that point B, we call it as B1. So what does it give me then? A1, B1 is such that A1 belongs to A and B1 belongs to B. So what I have done is taken two points A and B to look at the midpoint. Midpoint must be a part of the interval. So it must belong to either A or B. If it belongs to A, call it A1 and call B as B1. So what is the second possibility? If this is the case, then A1, so then this belongs to B. So define A1 equal to A. So let and B1 equal to A plus B by 2. Again, 
a1 b1 is such that so what is happening is such that again a1 belongs to a and b1 belongs to b so either case i have gotten is interval a1 b1 okay such that the left end point belongs to a and the right end point belongs to b whichever the case may be and another property that a1 b1 is half of ab the interval ab right because we are take one of them is a midpoint so either it is a to a plus b by 2 or a plus b by 2 divided to b1 right so it is only half of it so length of this interval a1 b1 is half of the length of the original one so let us continue this process so what does it mean continue i have got a1 b1 right and now i'll take the midpoint of a1 b1 right both a1 belongs to s it a b1 also belongs to s so midpoint must belong to s again so whatever we were doing for ab i am doing same thing for a1 b1 right so continue to get a2 b2 right such that a2 belongs to a b2 belongs to b and the length of a2 b2 is equal to half of length of a1 b1 which was equal to 1 by 4th length of ab so i have got a way of generating a smaller interval from ab a was in a b was in b right i am able to generate a interval of half the length with the same property left end point is in a right end point is in b whatever the case may be so continuing this process what i will get i will get a sequence of intervals a and b n which is nested right each one is in the previous one they are closed bounded intervals and the length is going to what is happening to the length of them it is becoming smaller and smaller it is going to zero so let us write so this will give us a nested sequence a n b n of close bounded intervals such that a n belongs to a b n belongs to b for every n and bn minus an goes to zero as n goes to infinity so i have manufactured a nested sequence of intervals now we approach nested interval property of the real line that says there must be a point in the intersection of all of them so imply by nested interval property intersection of a and b n n equal to 1 to infinity must be equal to some point let us call it c right so obviously a less than or equal to c less than or equal to b right now a and b are both in s so c must belong to implying c belongs to s right because a and b both belong s is a interval so it must belong but s is equal to union of it is a separation a union b so either it will belong to a or it will belong to b right so in case c belongs to a then what happens 
what is c basically it is a limit of b ends right so close to c there will be points of b right so i cannot find a neighborhood of c which will be disjoint from b and this is a point in a but a and b are separated so that is not possible right in case b b and converges to c implies a and b are not separated is that clear because every neighborhood of c must have some bn after some stage onward actually all right because bn is going to converge right nested interval property bns are the right hand points must be converging okay is a nested sequence is a decreasing sequence okay so that means there is no neighborhood of the point c c is in a which is disjoint from b because one bn at least will come in so a and b are not separated not possible not true so another possibility is c belongs to b same thing now you go to the left hand points a and converges to c implies a and b are not separated so not two so in other case we get a contradiction so our assumption right so what was our assumption our assumption was that s can be written as a union b a separation of s is possible right we have shown it is not possible that means s is a connected set right so implies so let us write hence s is connected so we have shown that we have characterized all connected subsets of the real line a subset of the real line is connected if and only if it is an interval right a similar question one can ask for rn okay uh, one can prove some theorems we will do it a bit later you need more techniques right more properties uh, of some other concepts so we will later on show for example that in rn what could be a uh, generalization of a interval what will be a ball right if you take a interval the generalization in rn is a ball so you would expect that every ball is connected at least that much should be true right so that can be uh, shown actually there is a concept called uh, pathwise connectedness some geometry comes in if any two points can be joined by a curve in a subset of rn then that subset is called path connected and one shows every path connected set is also connected but every connected need not be path connected so this kind of things happen so slightly more uh, complex slightly more involved to study connected subsets of rn or even in the plane so we'll do some uh, examples and some theorems uh, when we uh, come to uh, continuity and uh, such properties of rn okay functions so for the time being uh, we are doing it only on the uh, real line so we have right so till now what we have done is we have looked at subsets of the real line and special properties of those subsets right we started with real line as a complete ordered field and then after having done that we looked at what are called intervals there are some basic open sets called intervals and then we looked at sets uh, we looked at sequences whether they converge or not when do they converge and then we looked at sets which have the property that whenever a sequence of elements converge to some point whether that point is inside the set or not if all the limits are inside that was called a closed set right then we studied some properties of closed sets if a set is not closed you can make 
put it inside a set which is smallest closed subset of real line called the closure. And then we defined open sets <coughs> as <coughs> those sets whose complements are closed. The set is open if and only if it is complement is closed. So, open sets, properties and so on. And then we looked at uh, properties of uh, sets which are called uh, compact sets. So, a compact set is something more than a closed set, namely a sequence of elements of the set may not converge, but at least there is a subsequence which converges inside the set. So, these are called compact sets and then we characterize compact sets, namely we said every compact set, a set is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded, right. And then we looked at uh, a characterization of compact sets called Heinborel property that every open cover has got a finite sub cover and that we proved it only for the real line. True for Rn and uh, probably we will see if time permits we will do it uh, later on, okay. All this uh, uh, are con these are concepts which are also valid in general spaces called metric spaces. So, we will probably introduce that also a bit later, okay. For the time being let us concentrate on real line and properties of real line, right. So, we have looked at real line as such, sets in real line and special subsets. Of course, we looked at lastly the connected subsets, okay. Now, here is something very obvious probably I should state that which is good. So, uh, it is true for Rn also, the S contained in Rn is connected implies ok let us say it not connected means what S is equal to A union B where A union A and A B A A and B are separated right Now, that separation means what? Every point of A has at least a neighborhood, right, which is completely inside A, it does not intersect B because it is separated. So, every point of A must be open, every point of A must be an open, uh, it must be an interior point and hence A must be an open set, is that okay? every point of A, it is separated from B, so there must be a open neighborhood which does not intersect with B, right. So, there is a neighborhood of which is completely inside A, it does not intersect B, is that okay? Oh, it does not intersect B, that does not say it should be inside, it does not say it is inside. So, let me let me revise this statement. So, what I am saying is not correct. I have to go to subset actually, uh, that is not uh, a good idea. What I want to say is something uh, needs subspace topology, but let me let me let me say a milder version of it. Let us take a set U contained in so forget this one, okay. So, U is a subset which is non empty and contained in Rn. Let us take. So, let U be a non empty subset of Rn. Can U be uh, an proper subset? It is a subset of Rn, it is not empty, so it has at least one element, it is not whole of Rn. Then can U be both open and close? Suppose it is, suppose U is both open and close then what is real line equal to? It is u union u complement, right. Now, if true, then R n is equal to u union R minus u, right. My claim is this is a separation of R, R n. Why it is a separation of Rn? Because u is open, k 
take any point in u then there must be a ball inside u because u is open every point of u will be inside a ball which is completely inside u so u is separated from u complement and same if it is u is both open and close then u complement also is open so every point of u complement also is separated from u is it clear to everybody definition of openness says every point is an interior point so if i give you a point of u it must be in, inside a ball which is completely inside u so it will not intersect u complement that means u is separated from not only it is disjoint it is actually separated from u complement and now let us go to the other way around take a point in u complement u complement is also open because u is both open and close so u is close so u complement is open so every point of u complement will be inside a ball which is completely inside u complement so u complement also is separated from u for the same reason right that means real rn is not connected because we got a separation so conclusion is in rn there is no set non empty proper subset which is both open and close as a consequence of connectedness okay so let us write not possible implies rn is not connected not true because it is an interval so hence there uh, there is no proper non empty subset which is both open and closed so rn connected implies this kind of a property okay you can't have subsets which are both open and closed of course non empty and proper right 